Hey guys, Brendan in Productions here, and thanks for sticking with me. Welcome to part two of how to use Vim. Uh, keep in mind, in this video tutorial series, I will be using Vim on Windows. However, all of the things we're learning in Windows apply to any operating system and any instance of Vim that you could be using. So let's go ahead and get started. So in the past tutorial, we learned how to install Vim, how to set your path variable, and how to actually open files with Vim and save them and quit. Today we're going to be talking about editing files with Vim. Now editing files in Vim is actually, it can be a pretty complicated thing if you don't know what you're doing. However, let's just go ahead and dive right in and see what we can do. So in the last set of tutorials, we set up a test.txt file here, and we're just going to keep editing this. So in order to edit it with Vim, you have several options. You can open up Vim, then open the file. You can open up Vim from the terminal, then open the file. Or you can right click on the file and press edit with Vim. I'm going to go ahead and do the latter. So now that we have Vim open, we actually specifically have GVim open, and we can go ahead and start editing the file. Now you'll notice that a cursor is in kind of an odd place, and if we click we're actually able to move the cursor, however this is not how Vim is supposed to work. Vim was built on the idea that you could only use a keyboard. In fact, it was built so long ago that it was built for keyboards that did not even have arrow keys. And because of this, in order to move up, down, right, and left in Vim, you need to use keys besides the arrow keys. So, for those of you that are unfamiliar, these keys are going to be the H, J, K, and L keys. Weird, right? Yeah, I thought so when I first started learning Vim. However, you get used to it very quickly, and it actually makes typing extremely easy, because if you didn't notice, those keys are right on your home row, which is where your hands are supposed to be when you're typing anyway. So, you can go ahead and practice by moving your um, cursor all the way to the top by holding the K key and then all the way to the left by holding H. Now you can keep in the simple you can keep in mind the simple pattern of H is left, J is down, K is up, and L is right. H is left because it's on the far left, L is right because it's on the far right, and J and K, well let's I don't know, you just have to memorize that. So let's go ahead and get started with editing this file. Say we want say we want to remove the yet um, from the bottom line here. Uh, without using any more complicated functions, we can go ahead and navigate there. So we're going to have to go down a few lines. So we type, we press J to move our cursor down. And then to get to the yet, we type L to move our cursor to the right. And then once we're, um, now keep in mind the front of this blinking cursor is where your cursor actually is. So if we press the I key to go into insert mode, we can then go ahead and backspace all of the um, contents that we wanted to delete. And then if we want to go ahead and navigate again, we have to press escape to get back into command mode. Now, although this may seem like a pain at first, it's actually extremely useful because say we said, uh, this, this is something that I want to, want to keep and this word is to be deleted. Well, once we're done typing this line, we can press escape and we want to delete this word, so we use H to move over to the left, press I to get into insert mode, backspace this word, press escape to get back into command mode, and we're all set. Let's go ahead and do that a little slowly, um, just because it could be a little complicated. So we want to delete the word want from this line. In order to do that, we move H, we press H to get to the left. And we went a little over, so we can press L to get to the right. Once we're in the, remember the front of the blinking cursor is where your cursor actually is. So once we're in the necessary spot, we press I to get the cursor that can actually edit things. And then we can press backspace to get rid of the word. And then once we want to navigate around, um, we can go ahead and try to press H, J, K, and L. But since we're in insert mode, if we want to move down, it'll just type in the keys that we're pressing, which is definitely not good. So if we press backspace, we can get rid of those. Then press escape to go back into command mode and then we can go ahead and start navigating once again. So this is basic navigation in Vim and one of the the things that you really need to get down before you start using Vim a lot is you just need to practice these keys and this is definitely easy if all you need to do is actually go through a text file. Um, but there are several other ways to practice these. Um, I will actually link all of these methods of practicing in the video description. Um, you could actually run a program called Vim Tutor, which tries to teach you how to use Vim in an interactive fashion, but Vim Tutor actually gets boring pretty quickly, I found at least. Um, there's also a website online called Vim Adventures, where you play a small game, and in order to navigate, you have to press H to move your character left, L to move him right, K to move him up, and J to move him down. So, that's a little fun. 
and that's probably a little more entertaining than my videos anyway so you can go ahead and check that out but I mean we're staying in my videos for the humor that's it the humor and this guy's good just his his good attitude yeah right <laughs> anyway so this is how you use Vim K is up J is down L is le right H is left and then I switches to insert mode and escape switches back to command mode now if we want to actually um, cover a little more advanced commands we're gonna go ahead and do that in the next tutorial so be sure to check that out now we just edited this file and we need to save it and quit it so let's go ahead and say that we forget to save the file um, and then we want to quit so we type colon Q now keep in mind colon actually gets you down to the bottom of the uh, the application here and then you can type in commands and that's because Vim is actually centered around a, it's a command line uh, based program. So as you're using it, you can type in commands to do various things. So we type in colon to enter a command, and then let's just say we want to type Q to quit. Well, it tells us that there's no write since the last change, and then we can add um, the exclamation point to override. So if we really wanted to quit without saving our changes, we can say exclamation Q, which overrides any, any kind of error. However, we want to save these changes. So we can type in W to save. However, say we want to save the changes and quit at the same time. Well, then we can type WQ for write and quit. And that's that. So we're going to type colon WQ, which will write and quit. Uh, the program exits, and our text file is updated. So that's how you move around, basically, basic navigation in Vim. Um, if you have any questions, please don't refrain from leaving a comment. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Peace.